Christina Cody is drawn to creating children's books that capture life from a child's perspective while at the same time teaching meaningful life lessons. Well, her first book, The Perfectly Imperfect Pumpkin, teaches children how not so perfect can be the best choice and to appreciate differences. Second book, The Pirate Scope, lets kids be kids in a world of make-believe. And now in her latest book, Monster Reader, Christina reaches out to children of all ages who love to read and, like the monsters in this story, devour books. Let's find out more about that. Christina Cody is uh, here to talk about Monster Reader. This is Christina here that I'm pointing to. You can't see me, but Heather is on your left. Uh, Heather is uh, with the Heather Rosie, I should say, the book's illustrator. Uh, both here to talk about this latest book. Now, Christina, before we get started, how do you come up with these ideas? Um, I usually just pay attention to what my kids say and things oh. that I'm doing in the world. I listen to the way the children talk, and sometimes it just comes into my head when I'm watching a, a TV or reading a book. I read a certain book and a certain connection comes there and I just want to take those ideas and make them bigger. Now I noticed that one of your books uh, is about a pirate. I'm just going to go out on a reach here. Uh, you, you have your kids but you also have your husband Daniel who is a submariner yes. <laughs> in Groton, right? Uh, so does any of that play into any of your stuff? Well in that book it, it, it didn't. It was my daughter. that oh, It was okay. her idea to roll up a piece of paper like a pirate scope and say, hey mom I'm looking through my pirate scope. And that, the whole book came from that idea, that moment with her. And, you, and that's about make-believe. So kids don't see the same thing through that pirate scope that you know, one of us boring adults would, right? A exactly. Mm -hmm. we, we lose something along the way, and kids still have it. And yeah. we ha if we pay attention, we can have these ideas and then create books to follow the ideas that these kids have. All right. And Heather, we have some questions for you, too, in just a moment. But tell us about Monster Reader, because this is your latest book. Um, so monsters who eat books, uh, they don't just devour them like we can, they literally eat them. They do. They lick the pages. <laughs> they chew the illustrations. Yes, they get commas the stuck in their teeth. They get, what yeah. do they get? Commas stuck in their teeth. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. Yeah. Commas stuck in their teeth. A little floss there for them. Uh, and we do have some pictures of the book here to show. We have the book here, but um, we can show that while we're talking about this because as the illustrator, Heather, we're wondering about this. You, you drew these sketches, uh, or based on sketches, that you, Christina, had given some rough sketches. Is that right? Very rough. Okay. Well, <laughs> she makes them wonderful. I'm, a, I'm kind of a stick figure guy myself too. So, but what I'm wondering is, as an illustrator, what's easier for you to work with sketches from an author or to read the book and completely come up with it from scratch in your own imagination? Right. Well, um, I think that Christina's sketches helped me a lot to get an idea of, of the flow of how she wanted things to come into the page and then reading her words filled my head with pictures and so it was really easy to just bring it to life. And what was that process like? I mean did you come up with all the sketches first or, or do you sort of do this collaborative back and forth uh, and or then how do you decide what how many illustrations and where they're going to go? I've always you know, I don't think about it and then I kind of go because we take it for granted but well, for me it was it, the monster reader started out as a short poem about books being delicious and when I went from there I thought well who would actually devour books and it would be monsters when it comes to the sketches uh, I see some pictures in my head but Heather created many of the monsters that weren't even in my head she just made them better um, just saying hey well what about this and she would send me a black and white sketch and I would be like that's perfect that's the monster that I, I would see how neat. Now, by the way, because you're local, you're in Groton, mm -hmm. and you, Heather, are from down south. You flew up from right. Atlanta. Right. How do you guys know each other? Uh, <laughs> you can tell the story. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine from junior high and high school uh, knew Christina. She used to teach with her, and she contacted me through Facebook, uh -huh. told me that Christina was working on another book and was looking for an illustrator. And, you know, the rest is history. We, we um, used all kinds of technology to communicate back and forth. So, uh, and now we have a book. Much easier to do that now than it was once upon a time, right? Yeah. And by the way, I don't know if we got it because I wasn't looking at the monitor, but uh, we have some of your, some of your illustrations there. So um, this is one from uh, the Monster Reader, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is the wild woolly. He crunches tall tales <laughs> and enjoys myths. And in our idea here, this was a father figure or a grandfather figure reading to a child, which is, we know that, that children learn by listening to adults read to them. And that's how they start in, in enjoying their, their reading opportunities. They, they want to enjoy books through those parents' interaction. All right, now we want to tell folks about, uh, as we look at more pictures here, uh, about your event in a moment, but first, Monster Cupcakes, what's this about? Uh, I have a cousin who has a cookbook out 
Sprinkle Bakes is her blog and so um, and her cookbook and so Heather, my cousin Heather, yeah, another Heather <laughs> in Tennessee. Yeah. Um, she, uh, we were like we we wanted a recipe in the book and and she had a great moral monster that we just decided to put her in a kitchen and Heather came up with a wonderful cupcake recipe that's in the back of the book that they can make at home. Heather's from different mothers. Yeah. Mothers. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so you also have a book event today at Pumpkin Town, USA, in East Hampton, Connecticut. Uh, we have some information. We're uh, going to uh, give you that right now. Monster Reader. Uh, let's see. It's a book signing today at Pumpkin Town, USA, 93 East High Street. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. You're right. In East Hampton, Connecticut. Uh, so people can go to that. What time? It's going to be 12 to 3 today, but we're going to be there a little early and a little later. So. All right. Yeah. They get to meet both of you. They get to meet and, both of us and, and have the book monsters, signed right? mm -hmm. by both. Yeah. Fantastic for the kids and the adults, of course, too. Thank you very much, Christina Thank Cody you. Thank and you. Heather Rosie. Thanks Thank so much for being with us this morning.